Well, hello everybody and welcome to this episode of G-Bear's Off-Grid Ways, a homestead in the desert. We are looking at the concrete. I poured that anchor for this side of the BMA up there and uh, that's the one that pulled out of the ground. Well, if it pulls out of the ground again, there's really some problems. I mean, I'll be really, really in trouble because calculations say that that's a 750 pound anchor and uh, that pole actually uh, is three feet in the ground so that's holding um, some also and this is pulling straight down so so it would have the wind would ha ha actually have to blow against that uh, mast and that turbine hard enough to pull this thing and and move it in the ground and lift 750 pounds of concrete well I'll tell you what i'm not gonna bet that that's ever gonna happen but uh there's a a much bigger um anchor and i will be redoing the other one on the other side but it's holding pretty well right now so and i still have this one uh holding because that's got to dry for a few days, well, actually a couple of weeks, and then I'll, I'll take the strap off and I'll tighten my turnbuckle and um, get that one set back the way it's supposed to be. All right, well, the geo engineers are back. They heard me in my yesterday's episode uh, say there's no sign of them around. Well, they, they've been around all day. They got up early this morning and they've been clouding up the skies here. And uh, I guess uh, either they follow my channel, I hope they're subscribed, uh, or uh, somebody's listening in, right? All right. So we're coming down to the garden house because that's next on my list. And we'll step inside. Wow, look at how that cabbage is growing. Just happy as can be. My celery... My beets, everything is just really, there's my uh, cauliflower. Um, you see these little points sticking out of the ends of the flowers? That's actually the start of a peach. So just about every one of these flowers has a peach started in it right there. Uh, that's going to be f fun. Well, I uh, transplanted the kefir pear and uh, got it into the ground. And got it re-anchored again and it looks like my uh, graft here this is uh, from the bosque uh, pear tree over there and uh, I grafted the the bosque onto the uh, kefir and uh, yeah plenty of flowers on the uh, tomatoes looking real healthy nice and green and happy 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 and look at the buds on my grapevine yep it's uh it's uh getting ready for its springtime burst so same thing with that one over there it's got buds all the way up it's even got some little uh green uh growths on it the uh roma is almost as tall as i am uh lettuce doing pretty well over here and i did notice let's see if i can find it down here yeah there it is right there shard that's where my two rows of shard are and I've seen, oh yeah, there's some more over there. Uh, there's more over there. So yeah, it's uh, the shard is starting to come up. And uh, the lettuce is just doing fine. Now I'm not sure what this is, but I think it's just a weed. So I'll let it go a little further and then see what it looks like. And then I'll, if it's a weed, I'll pull it up and feed it to the chickens. Potatoes are really really up there just happy as can be everything's happy the uh blackberries or the black raspberries yeah they lots of new growth on them just really happy my herb box here with my volunteer carrot in the middle and i've got a bunch of new sprouts coming up over here i think i put some more um oregano and parsley in and uh, you can see the uh, little sprouts coming up there all over the place 
and uh, yep, yeah, my parsley looking good. The Italian parsley and the uh, ruffled and the mint. And uh, this is a lot of extra soil I had because I did transplant the uh, one uh, Concord grape. I got it into its box because that one is showing signs of uh, some little buds starting to uh, pop out at some of the knuckles. So, but this one over here, I, I'm not sure if this one's going to make it or not. But uh, I'll give it a little while longer because, uh, like I said, these are Concord grapes. And they don't usually um, start sprouting until like the end of April. And uh, then they, they grow like crazy from there. But once they, uh, once they get going, they'll be all over the place. Now this is volunteer down here. I'm not sure what the volunteer is, but uh, I didn't plant it there, so we'll see what comes up there. What's supposed to be here is uh, pepperoncinis and uh, two rows of seeds. And nope, we'll see. All right, this peach also has uh, peaches set on it, and this one's a little further advanced than the others, as you can see. And they got peaches on. A few of the branches there, they're just uh, about uh, the size of three BBs put together. Uh, anyway, this is the other grapevine over here. And uh, yeah, you can see the, the buds just getting ready to pop on this thing all the way through this thing, all the way up there at the top. You see some uh, starting to grow out of it over here. Same thing. So yeah, things are going to go now that the uh, weather's warming up a little bit. It was a much nicer day out here. I was able to get some work done. And uh, let's see how, how my apple tree does. It's uh, way too early for that. And here's the uh, Bosque pear. Yep, all those flowers are going to turn into pears. And there's a lot of them. There's some that haven't even uh, blossomed yet, like right over there. But uh, that's okay. I'm not sure. I don't think this uh, this graph took, but uh, we'll see. Give it some more time. My uh, spinach down here is starting to really show its stuff. My watermelon was uh, looking a little sad from all the cold and the wind that we had, but uh, it's coming back. So anyway, I peel, picked a, a leaf off of this uh, cabbage earlier, and I... Uh, started chewing on it to see what it tasted like and oh my god did that bring me back in memory to when i was a kid and me and my brothers and sisters would sit in the yard and eat a thing called sour grass and oh i loved that sour grass and that's what that tasted like it just uh, the the taste just instantly popped into my head sour grass so amazing all right so one thing i did yesterday that i forgot to include in yesterday's video was uh, it was battery maintenance time and uh, I did my battery maintenance and it took um, all of the uh, batteries the 18 batteries took uh, one gallon of distilled water so it needed it and uh, you'll learn it as you go along you can tell when it's going to be time to uh, service your batteries because uh, you'll notice that the uh, um, the voltage will drop off faster at, in the evening and take a little longer to, to come up in the mornings. And uh, when you start seeing that, it's time to go out and check your batteries. Uh, I've said it before, but there, we've got some new people on uh, line here, and I'm going to say it again. There's a... If you're going to be using uh, lead-acid batteries like mine... There's a, uh, a tool that you want to buy, and it's this thing right here. Let me see if I can get it out of there without destroying the place. Okay, so this is what you want right here. This is a battery filler with a two-quart capacity. You unscrew the cover, and you fill it up with distilled water. Do not use tap water. Uh, if you've got chlorine in your tap water or even chloramine, it'll destroy your batteries. You want to use distilled water. I buy the uh, distilled water 
in the bottles for right now, but once I get my distiller set up, I'll distill my own uh, to save a, a few dollars, but it's cheap. I think it's like uh, 99 cents a gallon, and uh, it's only every couple of months, a couple, two to three months is when I usually do service on the batteries, depending on how hard they've been worked. So, but the reason I say get this thing is because you can't go wrong with this. Now, if you're going to um, use just a, uh, a funnel and a, and a bottle and try to fill all of these batteries, you're going to have to be able to get your head over the top of them with a flashlight and look down inside and see where the water is as you're going. And uh, I was asked about this before, what these white things are. And these are actually a pretty cool thing that they came up with on these batteries. You move the lever like that, you take all three caps off at one time. Uh, pretty cool, huh? Anyway, um, with this unit, you push it down in, into the, uh, the unit and it'll go like that. See how it retracts? And then it'll, it'll fill the battery until it's at the right level and then automatically quit dispensing water. And I usually hold it by the handle with one hand and I put my other hand right on this cap and you can feel it going glug, 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 glug. And uh, I don't know why, but I, I've always been one of those people that counts them. So I'll count the glug, glug, glugs for each cell as I'm uh, filling. As soon as it stops, move to the next cell and say, and start filling. Your, your battery is at the exact right level. So that's why I say these are great. And you don't have to be able to see in the battery. You just put that thing in each cell, press down on it, feel for, for the uh, glug glugs until they stop, and there you go. So look at my batteries. I, I'm at 14.2 here. They're floating right now. And i uh, got plenty of power here. 14.2 everywhere. So, yep. Real good shape. So, uh, batteries were serviced yesterday. All right. I did the PMA footing, the transplants in the garden. And I did the uh, geoengineers at back. And oh yeah, got another rat this uh, last night. That's one every night in this trap. And uh, I finally had to switch to the second glue trap because I've been pulling out the uh, the rats out of it, um, out of the other one, and they lose a little bit of glue with each one. So at the end of all of that, uh, it I just couldn't. I didn't have any glue areas left. Just uh, places with fur and missing glue, so I switched to another glue trap. I also went up in the attic today, and I checked the glue traps up there, and nothing. Nothing got into any of the glue traps up there. This one they have no choice because I built a little tunnel, and it covers the entrance that goes underneath the, uh, the shed here. And apparently there's quite a few um, uh, pocket, well not pocket, um, pack rats living under there because uh, so far I've got uh, four of them in that one trap right there and I did get a fifth one in my bug traps over here and just uh, I set that bucket there with a, a little piece of expanded steel going up kind of like a ramp and uh, I guess one of them got in there climbed up and fell in and drowned now these things have been here all last year, and um, again this year they're doing their job. It's killing uh, flies and, and insects like crazy. And I haven't had a fly in my cabin now in about a year. And these buckets, right now, if I dump the water out of them, have got about six inches of dead insects in the bottom, not counting what's floating on top of the water still. So yeah, there's a lot of... A lot of bugs going into these uh, units. And what is it? Well, when I buy these um, totes, they always have a little bit of uh, high glucose corn syrup in the bottom of them. It's called rooster syrup for some reason. I don't know why. I looked it up on the internet. It didn't really tell me much. But uh, the syrup in there are really thick and sticky as heck. And uh, I have to wash that out of there if I'm going to use the water. So I cleaned it all out, 
but I saved the the syrup and I put a little bit in the bottoms of the buckets and then put water in there and uh, just, I just noticed that when I did the first one like that I walked away and I was only gone for maybe 10 minutes I came back to it and there was probably a hundred flies uh, stuck in the uh, water in the sticky water and I went oh my god that's a great fly trap so now I have four of them and they work great and no flies just go figure great fly trap all right everybody that's about all i have for today um i'm going to uh go inside and get a cold one it's a nice day today uh, the winds were real mild i got to do my laundry just in case it gets windy tomorrow um, i wanted to make sure i had everything done so that's it this is G Bear reminding you, give me a thumbs up down there. Subscribe if you haven't already, please. And uh, tell your friends about me. And anybody uh, has any questions, put them in the comment section below. I'll get back to you. G Bear, signing off.